What's going on, everybody? Welcome to another brand new installment of Renegades Reviews, exclusively here as always on the Casa D18 Studios channel. I, of course, am your host, the Renegade JJ Williams. And today we're going to keep on going through the silver age of the Walt Disney Animation Studios and wrap up the 50s with the classic 1959 film, Sleeping Beauty. Featuring the vocal talents of Mary Costa, Eleanor Audley, Verna Felton, Barbara Jo Allen, Barbara Luddy, and Bill Shirley. What's going on, everybody? Thank you for joining me here once again for another brand new installment of Renegades Reviews. And as I said during the introduction, we're going to wrap up the 1950s. We're about halfway through the Silver Age of the Walt Disney Animation Studios filmography. And we're gonna discuss the last princess film until The Little Mermaid, 1959's Sleeping Beauty. Let's get right into this here, shall we? Our film opens and King Stefan and Queen Lee welcome their very first child, a daughter that they name Aurora. After many childless years, a holiday is proclaimed so that all can pay homage to the brand new princess. And at her christening, Aurora is betrothed to Prince Philip, son of King Hubert, in order to help unite their kingdoms. Soon, the Royal Herald announces the arrival of the three good fairies, Flora, Fauna, and Meriwether. The three fairies are allowed to bless Aurora with one gift each. No more, no less. So Flora blesses her with the gift of beauty, while Fauna blesses her with the gift of song. But before Meriwether can bestow her gift on the child, Maleficent, an evil witch who is furious about not being invited to the christening, crashes the party and places a curse upon the child out of retaliation. Maleficent proclaims that before the sun set on her 16th birthday, she will prick her finger on a spinning wheel and die. Maleficent leaves after placing her curse upon the child, with Meriwether still having her gift to bless upon the child. So she uses her gift to weaken Maleficent's curse, stating that instead of death, she will instead fall into a deep sleep until true love's kiss breaks the spell. Worried still about Maleficent's curse, King Stefan orders that all the spinning wheels in the kingdom be destroyed. The fairies know that Maleficent will not rest until she succeeds in her plan, so they convince King Stefan and Queen Lee to allow Aurora to live with them in a cottage hidden in the forest until her 16th birthday. During this time, Aurora is renamed as Briar Rose and grows into a beautiful young woman. She has no idea that her guardians are fairies, since they have lived the past 16 years disguised as peasants. On the morning of her 16th birthday, Flora, Fauna, and Meriwether ask Briar Rose to go out and gather berries while they prepare a surprise party for her. While in the forest, Briar Rose befriends the forest animals and sings them a song, Once Upon a Dream. Philip, who has grown into a handsome young man of his own, hears Aurora's voice and is struck by its beauty and its grace. Aurora is initially startled as she has been raised not to talk to strangers, but she 
and Philip begin to fall in love. As she takes off to head back to the cottage, she invites Prince Philip to come to the cottage that evening in order to meet Flora, Fauna, and Meriwether. While Aurora's gone, Fauna attempts to bake a cake, and Flora attempts to make a gown, but without using their magic. After disastrous results, Meriwether is able to convince the other fairies to use their wands in order to do the absolute best for Aurora. Flora and Meriwether argue over the color that the gown should be, and their magic attracts the attention of Diablo, Maleficent's raven. When she returns to the cottage, Aurora is thrilled to tell her guardians that she has fallen in love. Unaware that Prince Philip is the love, the fairies tell Aurora about her true identity and that she is already betrothed. Diablo overhears the news and flies off to give Maleficent the good news. A heartbroken Aurora cries in her room as Prince Philip tells his father that he wishes to marry a peasant girl despite his betrothal to a princess, which leaves his father, King Hubert, devastated. The fairies take Aurora to the castle in order to await her birthday celebration and to be reunited with her parents. But Maleficent shows up and lures Aurora into a dark tower, complete with a spinning wheel. Flora, Fauna, and Meriwether attempt to stop her, but before they can, Aurora pricks her finger on the spindle of the wheel, fulfilling the prophecy of the curse, with just moments before the sunset. The fairies arrive, too late to save Aurora, and Maleficent taunts their failure, basking in her success before disappearing. Heartbroken about what happened, the fairies place Aurora on a bed in the highest tower and cast a spell on everyone in the kingdom, causing them to sleep until the curse upon Aurora has been broken. After overhearing a brief, sleepy conversation between the two kings, Flora, Fauna, and Meriwether realize that Prince Philip is the man that Aurora fell in love with in the forest. So they rush to find him, but they're too late. As the fairies discover that Maleficent and her goons have abducted him. At her castle in the Forbidden Mountains, Maleficent shows Prince Philip the sleeping Princess Aurora and says that she will lock him away until he is an old man. And only then will she release him in order to meet his love, who will have not aged a single day. The fairies rescue Philip and arm him with the magical sword of truth and the shield of virtue, and he escapes from the Forbidden Mountains. An enraged Maleficent surrounds the castle with thorns, but fails to stop him. She then confronts him directly by transforming into an enormous black dragon. They engage in battle, and Philip throws the Sword of Truth directly into Maleficent's heart, killing her. Philip races to the castle and awakens Aurora with the kiss, breaking the spell and awakening the kingdom. The royal couple descends the stairs into the ballroom, and Aurora is finally reunited with her parents. Philip and Aurora take the ballroom floor and begin to dance as Flora and Meriwether resume their dispute over Aurora's gown color, switching between blue and pink as our film draws to its close and they live happily ever after. 
Sleeping Beauty is one that I honestly didn't get into until many, many years later. I think I had to be old enough to really, really understand what was going on here much deeper than your typical princess movie, you know, to, to fully understand Maleficent's curse and her reasoning behind it. And just a little sidebar here. I love the first Maleficent movie with Angelina Jolie and all of the backstory that they gave to the character, making you understand a little bit more why she was the way she was. On the surface here, when you're watching it as a kid, you see a prince, a princess, a dragon, happily ever after. But when you get a little bit older and you can dig a little bit deeper into this, there's there's a lot of stuff going on here that I really feel makes Sleeping Beauty a more complex film. Another unusual thing about it is the fact that there's only one song in it, Once Upon a Dream. Unlike all the other major princess movies, you only really get Once Upon a Dream. Okay. There's also the song, I want to say it's called Scrumps, where the two kings are drinking and getting plastered. But that song definitely doesn't have the staying power like Once Upon a Dream does. I would put Once Upon a Dream right up there with Someday My Prince Will Come. Not really a fan of the one that was in Cinderella. I believe it was called So This Is Love. But I would put Once Upon a Dream right up there with Someday My Prince Will Come as far as songs that command that you take notice and that leave a legacy with them. I mean, it, it's such a great song. You know, I know you, I walked with you once upon a dream, even though we've never met before, I feel like I already know you. And it's just such a great tune. Of course, in recent years, much like we discussed with Snow White, there's been some controversy over the kiss that wakes her up. The fact that it was a non-consensual kiss. But again, just like we said in Snow White, she's asleep. The only way the curse can be broken is with love's first kiss. Sometimes you've just got to throw that stuff out the window because otherwise she's essentially dead without being dead and will never have the curse upon herself or the kingdom broken. Because you got to figure everybody in the kingdom is asleep until she's awoken. So, yeah, maybe she can't consent to the kiss. But all those other people are suffering at the same time. So sometimes you just got to throw that stuff out the window. When it comes to my rating for this film, I'm going to go ahead and give Sleeping Beauty four out of five stars. It's definitely up there for the princess films for me. I prefer it over Cinderella. I prefer it over Snow White. We'll get to The Little Mermaid before we're done this month in the movies, but then all the other princess films will come along next year. So out of the ones that I've done so far, I definitely have to give Aurora and Sleeping Beauty the highest marks. Make sure you guys get out there on the social media. Get those hashtags trending for me. Hashtag Casa D18 Studios. Hashtag Renegades Reviews. Hashtag Renegade Returns. And of course, the ever popular hashtag shenanigans. We interrupt this episode of Renegades Reviews for an important announcement about merchandising. 
Merchandising? What's that? Merchandising. Come, I'll show you. Merchandising, merchandising, where the real money's made. Make sure you go over to teespring.com slash stores slash Jeff Meacham Network for all the t-shirts you see here from the West Coast professor Jeff Meacham himself. You can get shirts for the Jeff Meacham Network, Talk Wrestling, as well as the red and gold Meachamania shirts. And while you're there, don't forget to get your shirts of the Casa D18 Studios Brotherhood, the Dads on Wrestling shirt, the Renegade J.J. Williams, Stat Boy Sports Bar, and the hashtag Stat Boy Approved shirt. Make sure you go over to teespring.com slash stores slash Jeff Meacham Network and score your shirts today. Make sure you guys get out there. Do what that commercial just told you. Go to teespring.com slash stores slash Jeff Meacham Network for all the official merchandise of the Casa D18 Studios Brotherhood. Get you your Renegade J.J. Williams shirt. Dad's not always on wrestling. Stat Boy Sports Bar. Hashtag Stat Boy Approved. Hashtag Shenanigans. Get you your official merchandise of the Jeff Meacham Network. Three different designs of the Jeff Meacham Network logo for you to choose from, along with Talk Wrestling, Meachamania, and so much more. Get out there, support us. While you're supporting, do what that ticker tells you to do. If you enjoy my content, send me a little donation to that PayPal. If you'd like to help me acquire a couple more movies to review, go to my link tree, purchase something off my Amazon movie wish list. Either way, I'll be eternally grateful for however you choose to show your support. Keep in mind, I'm not monetized at this point, so I'm not making money off my YouTube videos. The only way I can make money is if you guys, my fans, go out there and support me. So if you like my content, if you enjoy the hard work that I put in daily to make sure that there's something up every single day of the week for you guys to enjoy, go to that PayPal link, however much you feel comfortable sending, send me a donation. Or, like I said, go to that link, tree link, give me something off my Amazon movie wish list, and when I open it on Renegade Recap, I'll give you a quick shout out, a live thank you, and then when I review it and work it into my themes, whatever I can fit it into, I'll give you another shout out, make it a little bit more interactive for you guys, but get out there and support. Tomorrow, right back here on the Casa D18 Studios channel, make sure you tune in for another brand new episode of Renegades Reviews. When we enter the 60s of the Silver Age of the Walt Disney Animation Studios filmography, and we discuss from 1961, 101 Dalmatians, featuring the voice talents of Rod Taylor, Kate Bauer, Betty Lou Gerson, Ben Wright, Lisa Davis, J. Pat O'Malley, Thurl Ravenscroft, Barbara Luddy, and Paul Fries. You're not going to want to miss out tomorrow right back here on the Casa D18 Studios channel when I discuss 101 Dalmatians. To all my loyal viewers that have been tuning in during the premiere, leaving your comments over here, thank you very much. I greatly appreciate it. All my loyal fans, tune in later in the day watching On Demand, leaving your thoughts and comments down here. Thank you very much. I greatly appreciate it. I appreciate each and every one of you guys who tune in on a daily basis and check out my content. Thank you very much for watching, and I will see you guys next time.